I'm going to go over the K1 Alley series. And what we've done is there's basically two types of systems that you work with. Uh, one of which is component systems, what you're looking at here. And then there's systems where it's all built into a case. So right off the bat, I'm going to give you the pros and cons of having a component system versus all built into a case. Because that's something a lot of people don't think about. Because when you build this all into a case, if I took all this stuff and I started racking the wireless mics, racking this, getting a rack kit for the mixer, putting in a surge protector all in a case, having the glider. In fact, you can look over here, and here's an example of a case real quick. That gives you an idea of a rack case. And it's more expensive. So what people do is sometimes they just want to use components to save a lot of money. Because you, you have cases that are over $200. You have you have just over $100 in surge protectors, rat, you have rack kits, all sorts of things that encompass building it into a case and which makes it a more expensive system. So what this customer did is this customer is using this basically for home settings outside the home, uh, for home entertainment, but he wanted a professional feel. So he was able to keep this as components to save money and invest it into a better system, meaning 15-inch speakers that are powered. These 15-inch speakers right here, they have, unlike your standard speakers, if you went out and spent $600 on a pair of powered speakers, you would get just a pair of powered speakers. They may not be high-end, and they, they only work with just those speakers. These are different in the sense that they have PVs, legendary amplifier systems in it where it'll change the mode of the amplifier in it to allow you to plug in a second set of speakers that are non-powered and you basically could run four 15-inch speakers off of just the two amplifiers that are in these speakers. So this customer, you'll notice that there's no speaker stands. Even though most often we will sell a system like this with stands, the customer already has their own stands. The uh, LCD monitor in the background, that doesn't come with this system. It's just a demonstration purpose. This individual will hook it up to their TV at home or bring out a large TV outside and so forth. So, as we're looking, we have the 15-inch speakers. We have a very compact laptop. Now, most often, we do not recommend the small laptops, the netbooks, because they just don't have enough power for professional use. But in this case, this individual is just using it for home, so they just want to play the karaoke music. They want to be able to upload CDGs to it and so forth and use it basically in its most simplistic form. If I've if the customer called me and said he wanted to go out to bars, he wanted to use this for professional use, wanted to get online with it and do this and that with it, then I would have changed it to, um, to go ahead and set it up where he would have a larger laptop with more processing power, but this is sufficient for home and it helps save money. This also has an external CD drive here. He doesn't have to have that hooked up all the time, but let's say he wants to start uploading CDs, he has that for that. Then you'll notice he has a laptop stand to keep it. He could basically sit here with a stool and, you know, just peck at the keyboard, have the mixer down here. And like I said, the laptop stand basically goes like this, goes down and then here. And the mixer is basically sitting on the legs of the, of the laptop stand. Now going over how we connected this. If you look at the mixer, this is your mains. I have adapters here because this is quarter inch. A lot of the bigger mixers that we use has XLR. The, so what I did was I used two XLR to quarter inch adapters and then put the XLR to XLR. These are going into the back of the speakers. Then what I did was I used, these are quarter inch adapters. So he has, he could hook up his karaoke player, like a CD player right here. And then this is where his laptop is. And it goes up to here, which is a eighth inch headphone jack. So now what he's going to do is he's going to be able to run the volume on both of these channels here for either one, whether he uses the karaoke player or the uh, laptop. He can even unplug this and hook up an iPod smartphone and utilize it that way. Then you have over here to the left, which is four microphone inputs. Those are all XLR and these are feeding right to the back of these units. So you basically have microphone one through four 
and what you'll do is you'll control each one from here. The way we have this set up is we have the gain a little bit further down here. It's almost right at three o'clock. So I set them all the same. We set the EQs the same. You could end up adjusting this any way you want, depending on the singer. But for the most part, this seems to be the sweet spot. You'll notice that the first set of yellow knobs are all the way down. And this is more so because we don't have an external uh, item hooked up to this controlling it. But this is your effects. So you have your highs, mids, lows, your effects. And then this is a pan. This just uh, pans the sound from left to right. Chances are you'll never use it, but let's say you had, you ended up wanting to put one speaker in one area, one in another, and you only needed to hear one of them, that's when you could switch left and right. Now over to the right here, this is your main mix. You'll notice that we have it up right around 12 o'clock. You can put it up higher, but it will bring in more residual noise. So for the most part, we put it here, especially doing karaoke. But when you need to gain more power out of this, easily turn this up and then turn the volumes up on each. You'll notice that for the microphones, we have the gain set lower than we do for the actual music. So when you use this for music, I basically have it, if you think of a clock, right around 1 o'clock. And you could adjust that as well. And all these channels, once you understand one channel, you basically know them all. Then right here you have what's called the effects presets. We already set it here. You could tinker with this, change it to different settings and so forth. It has a lot of different settings that you can use testing out different echo and so forth. Then you have the control room, I, the headphones. So you could hook up your headphone up here and actually listen to it right there if you want to on any of the uh, channels and so forth. And these are your auxiliary returns. This is when you're utilizing, like you're hooking up something else. Now also, you'll notice the phantom power. What that is, is typically churches use that. If you have what's called a condenser mic, in your case, you don't have any condenser mics. You're using the standard dynamic microphones. So make sure this is always off. But if you ever get a condenser microphone, let's say you take this to the church and they have a nice choir mic and it, it's a condenser, then you turn, turn this on and it enables these to have phantom microphone power as well. Now when you're utilizing this system, the one thing you want to make sure, your output level. You want to make sure you don't go past zero. If you end up going past zero, let's say you go in a larger room and you're pushing this and it's going up into the yellow and red, that means that you're asking your system to do more than it was designed for. And what happens is you have to add speakers to make it more efficient and then maybe add a subwoofer if you're doing any type of DJ work to round that out and give it more power. So this is basically your, your mixer. The laptop, I'm going to go ahead and make separate videos. This is basically the CAB software, and one of the biggest advantages to CAB software is it accepts a lot of different formats. Unlike your standard karaoke software, this accepts their what's called the Super CDGs, uh, DVDs, MP3s, regular CDGs, and you could basically just upload these into here and put them in several different folders. Like the way I have it is on the D folder, this laptop is partitioned. So you have the C drive, which is handling the actual software, and the D drive is dedicated only for the songs. So we made a song folder here called Karaoke Songs. And you click into that, and it has all the songs in there, and then you could just add it to the playlist. Now that it's on the playlist, you could basically drag and drop up here in order to play them, and then you could press play. Now also, when you're setting up the screen, let me go ahead and press play on here. So when you're, when actually I put it on pause, you notice there's no screen up here, but let's say I wanted to do the screen over on the left corner here on the software itself, it says screen. I click that, now you got the screen. Use your mouse, click the left, hold it down and drag it over to the right. Now you'll see it on the TV screen. And then you could go ahead and double click it. Basic, well, actually, yeah, double click it and it'll bring it to the screen size. Double click it, you can take it back out, or just uh, click this screen on here to get rid of it. So that's how you set up your screen, but I'm going to have little tutorials for that as well. But as far as the system, the only other thing that I could talk about right now 
is if you look at the back of the speaker, the way this is set up, you have your power, then back here you have your XLR cable that goes in, then you'll notice over here is the level. You'll notice that I don't have it all the way up. The one thing I want you to do is when you set this up, set these speakers up as far as you can away from each other and see if you could bring this all the way up. Because what happens is when you have the contour, what, this is basically a base contour, it adds a little more depth to it. It's like an auto EQ. <laughs> and basically what it's doing is it's changing the contour of the frequencies and so forth and it's a better sounding cabinet overall. But when we do have this engaged, because the speakers are so close to each other on the table right now, you could hear a sound with the magnets interacting with each other. So we have it down here where there's no sound. But if you need to max this out, you can bring both of these all the way down. Just make sure the speakers are further away and you're not hearing a sound like a room like that. If you don't hear that, then keep these max open. That's how I would run them. But like I said, just for demonstration purposes, we have it set here. So this is pretty much it on the overall system.